I recently made a video that might have been challenging for many to receive. I recognize the challenge of dealing with information that is completely against what you once believed. When you come across things like that, you have to engage in a mental battle deciding what it is that you want to believe and what it is that you're going to accept. I want you to know that I do recognize the challenge that many of you may be dealing with. And in regards to me and this ministry, I want you to be clear that I am not asking nor telling anyone to just follow me blindly. I try to go to great lengths to be as transparent and clear as possible. I illustrate things that many others might not do because I think visually understanding something in this day and age is important. I try to give in-depth history so that it can help you do your own research. Don't ever just take my word for it, but do your own homework. Our walk with Yah is based on a personal relationship, and it is important that we come to him sincerely in truth, and that is why I make these videos. The truth has been hidden over centuries. Like it or not, you have to come to terms with understanding that our faith has been hijacked and falsehoods have become normalized, making them what's normal and making the truth dangerous and something that people avoid. I recognize that for many of you that watch my video about the rapture, you're challenged and you're trying to figure out what you want to believe. This subject is a very important one that needed to be covered, being that we are so close to the times of tribulation. If you're going to be ready for Yah's kingdom, you must be aligned to his word. You must understand his will. You must truly be about his kingdom. In that last video about the rapture, I dealt with the history surrounding the pre-tribulation doctrine. It was important to understand the foundation from which that doctrine came to be. But for many of you, that history means nothing if you don't understand the truth biblically. Because maybe in your cognitive dissonance, you want to try to rationalize the information given by believing that maybe Darby was truly correct and maybe the whole doctrine of dispensationalism is true. So what we need to do in order to end the discussion and wrap this topic up about the rapture, we need to discuss what really happens in the end based upon the scriptures and not based upon doctrines of men. We also need to discuss the dangers of believing in this pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. Because this just isn't some inconsequential piece of doctrine that doesn't have consequences if you follow it and believe it. So we need to discuss it and make sure it is truly understood. The pre-tribulation rapture doctrine is dangerous. We're going to make sure you understand why. Let's begin. Okay, so in the last video, we discussed the history of how the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine came to be. But before I go into biblical truth about what actually happens in the rapture, we need to discuss something about the danger of this doctrine. Please make sure it is known and understood that those who are following the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine, there is a high probability that you are not ready for the times ahead. As you have followed this doctrine, you probably have not been building yourself up properly to deal with reality. And if you do not get this in check, you are going to be conquered. The pre-tribulation rapture doctrine builds up a lazy faith that has made too many believers ill-equipped for the spiritual battle. The events and agendas that are being waged against us, you are not being properly prepared to fight against. For those that follow that doctrine, there seems to be a normal thought that so many of you have. I hear it often when you talk about the mark of the beast and you talk about the Antichrist. People often say the same thing. They say, none of that matters to me because I won't be here for it. And that thought is exactly what will fail you when the times come. So many of you have not dealt with the truth that you will be here for the tribulation. And because of that, when the evil times come, you will not be ready to deal with it. And we know this for certain because so many of you fell for the agenda a couple years ago when they distributed their solution. The mainstream Christian church was teaching everyone that there is nothing to fear because the solution is not the mark of the beast. And they know this for certain because the mark of the beast requires allegiance to the Antichrist and the Antichrist will not come until the church is raptured. So they said, go ahead and take that solution. Look. Hey everybody, Greg Laurie here answering the question, is the vaccine the mark of the beast? Ready for the answer? No. How do you know, Greg? Well, here's how I know. When people take the actual mark of the beast, which of course is 666, 
they will know they're taking it because you will have to pledge allegiance to the Antichrist. So there can't be a mark without an Antichrist. An Antichrist cannot be revealed until Jesus Christ returns for his church and catches us up to heaven. But listen, the technology for this mark, it's effectively here, right? We all know that. So if that's close and the coming of Christ for his church, it's even closer. Look up, your redemption draws near. And this doctrine and way of thought was everywhere. So many people attached to this doctrine because they are not following Yah, but they're following this mainstream Christianity doctrine. I need you to know that you were taken advantage of because you are following false doctrine and following false teachers. You are following doctrine that did not align with the scriptures, but because you are following man's interpretation and what was popular, you fell to the agenda. And that event was just a small preview of what is to come. Because as the agendas increase and we really come into the tribulation period, if people follow all these agendas, all because they haven't been raptured yet, you can see how problematic that will be for those who call themselves believers. But here's the thing. I will go over the danger in more detail later in this video. But it's possible that you still do not agree with what I have said because you just don't understand Bible prophecy and how the pre-tribulation raptor doctrine is false. So I'm going to clarify it biblically. So let's deal with the biblical doctrine. The main scripture that sets off the pre-tribulation rapture is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Let's read. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Yahusha died and rose again, even so, Elohim will bring with him those who sleep in Yahusha. For this we say to you by the word of the Adun, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Adun will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Adun himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of Elohim. And the dead in Messiah will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Adun in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Adun. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So this right here is the main verse amongst other verses that people use in their pre-tribulation doctrine. Now, as you read that scripture, not once did it say that this was happening before the tribulation. Again, like I keep saying, and I will continue to drill in, that was the doctrine of men that said that, not the scriptures. But I'm going to prove it. It is important that you understand the events of the end times first, because what has been narrated to you through the dispensational pre-tribulation rapture has been taught to you because you believe that Yahuwah is going to deal with the Jews after he saves the church. But that is just not accurate. No one who is a believer should be separating themselves from Yasharel. Now, so you're not confused, this is the actual Hebrew transliteration of Israel, in case you are confused by that word. Now, let me just say this. If you're new to this channel, I do use the Hebrew names for our Messiah and our Creator, the Most High. I honor their names. I do not break the third commandment. I do not practice the ineffable name doctrine and Hellenization. I have made specific videos covering this. I have went in depth. So if this is something that challenges you or confuses you and you feel like you need to comment about it, please know I have made playlists that go over this subject and exactly why I use these names. If you have questions, please watch those videos before you start commenting and speaking through ignorance. I have made content that explains all of this. I love clarity and I'm just making sure that that is said. Again, no one who is a believer should be separating themselves from Yasharel. As a believer, saved through the redemptive blood of Yahusha, the Yahudin, that's the Hebrew translation that you use for Jew, again, through the redemptive blood of Yahusha, the Yahudim, as well as the other tribes of Yasharel, along with the Gentiles, that's the other nations, everyone who has truly accepted Messiah are saved through the blood of the covenant and they will be passed over when Yahuwah gives out his wrath and his judgment. So the first thing that people need to be more clear about is the covenant that you have with Yah. If you recognize that you're a Gentile, 
you must recognize that Yahuwah has not made a covenant with you directly, but he has made promises for you. And those are what you should rely on. Yahuwah did not make a different covenant for Yasharel and the church. He said he was making a new covenant with the house of Judah and Israel. Behold, the days are coming, says Yahuwah, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke. Though I was a husband to them, says Yahuwah, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says Yahuwah. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, No Yahuwah, for they all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says Yahuwah. For I will forgive their iniquity, and their sin I will remember no more. That's Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. So this is the new covenant he made, and most of us know this scripture. But somehow, while we read this scripture, many people just ignore some of the most important words that help us understand what's being said. He says, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. This was very specific. It's nothing to feel left out about because he has promises for everyone. It's just that you need to understand specifically what he promises and what he has said that he's going to do. Now, please understand that through Yahusha, the Messiah, Yahuwah did fulfill a great deal of biblical prophecy, fulfilling the promises of Abraham and the prophecy that Yahusha will be a light to the Gentiles. Let's first deal with the promises of Abraham. What was the promise made to Abraham? In Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3, Yahuwah speaks to Abraham and says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That's Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. He was promised he would make Abraham a great nation, and that through Abraham, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This was the promise. And as we went through Israel's history, we waited for the seed of Abraham to come forth to fulfill the promise made. And Yahusha was the fulfillment that provides the blessing to all the families of the earth if they all believe in him. As Paul tells us, For you are all sons of Elohim through faith in Messiah Yahusha. For as many of you as were baptized into Messiah have put on Messiah, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Messiah Yahusha. And if you are Messiahs, then you are Abraham's seeds and heirs according to the promise. That's Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 to 29. And therefore, during this time of the Gentiles, this is what holds and it's beautiful. Through faith in Yahusha, believers from all the families of the earth are now heirs to the promise given to Abraham. Yahusha has redeemed all those who believe on him, whether Jew or Gentile. No matter nationality, your race, whether you're male or female, rich or poor, if you come to Yah through faith in Yahusha, you can receive Yahuwah's mercy. All people can become heirs to the promise. And every one of us should say aloud, Hallelujah, which means praise Yah. So that's dealing with the promise of Abraham. Now let's talk about the next part. Messiah being a light to the Gentiles. Isaiah prophesies of the Messiah multiple times being a light for the Gentiles. In chapter 11, verse 10, he prophesies, And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, who shall stand as a banner to the people. For the Gentiles shall seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious. In chapter 42, verse 1, he says, Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. Verse 6 of the same chapter says, I, Yahuwah, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles. And lastly, chapter 49, verse 6 says, Indeed, he says, 
It is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. I mean, this is absolutely wonderful. His prophetic word foretold of his gift to the world and covering not only Israel, but to the Gentiles, the other nations as well. And so by these two understandings, the promises of Abraham and Messiah being a light to the Gentiles, you should not be separating yourself from Yasharel. You should be Yasharel. The church, which means assembly, you're an assembly of believers of Yasharel. And you must take part of the promises Messiah has allowed you to be an heir of. So I want you to imagine the nerve you once had looking towards the end times and believing he is going to not let you go through the tribulation, but you believe his chosen children are going to go through it. Please understand that the reason why the people that you think are currently his chosen people are not interested in Messiah is because they're not interested in Messiah and they never will be. And what you have is doctrine that makes you want to review this in a way that it eventually will happen. That's deception and it's all about the other side of the agenda. You need to come to terms with that. And so you need to go back and understand the history that they're not telling you. It's really nerve of anyone looking towards the end times and believing that he's not going to let you go through the tribulation, but he's going to make his chosen children go through it. He has never said that. Man has told you to rationalize him in this way. And if this is what you think he's going to be doing, it's sadly because you do not know him. And we're trying to rectify this now. I have to make sure this is made clear because I believe that in defense of people's stance on the pre-tribulation rapture, they were missing the point I was making in that last video. The pre-tribulation rapture is not about the church, even though today the Christian church has made it that way. It is about the church in Israel. And when you follow it, it's because you are falsely believing that there is a different covenant for the Christian church than there is with Israel. And that is completely false. You are expected to be rewarded for your faith before the tribulation, and then you expect the Jews will be able to receive Yahusha themselves. You feel like there is a different covenant for the church and for Israel, and you are completely incorrect. It's all one covenant. There is no Christian covenant. And if you have decided to not accept the actual covenant that Yahuwah has given us, and you have now made your own covenant that you feel makes more sense, you are now not under the covenant that will bring you salvation. Do you understand that? You've made your own covenant. So how can you think that you're under the covenant with Yah? This thing is much bigger than the debate about pre-tribulation or the mid-tribulation or post-tribulation. That is a distraction. This is much bigger. The only reason why you see and accept the pre-tribulation rapture is because you see a separation between the church and Israel. Do you not like the covenant Yahuwah made with his children that he has allowed the world to be blessed by? When reviewing what I'm saying, please remove all these old views that you stubbornly have held on to since you've been debating this subject. And please understand what I'm trying to say. Let's take it slow, like this. Answer this. Is there a different covenant between the church and Israel? Yes or no? Now the answer is a clear no. So if you say there is, Show clearly when Yah made a covenant with the Christian church. Show it in the comments, please. I will be looking for it. But the answer is no. So next question. If there is only one covenant, why do you think Yahuwah is saving you from tribulation and not Israel? These two questions need to be answered if you're going to stubbornly hold on to the pre-tribulation rapture view. Because I do not think that most of you recognize that by holding on to this view, you have made a new covenant that has not been established. Except the covenant that Yahuwah gave us. You only have one shot at this. You cannot make your own covenant with Yah. He has made a covenant with you that you must accept. He has not separated the Christian church from Israel. Matter of fact, the Christian church is just the title. We are all under one covenant. So I hope you're with me so far. I had to go really far backwards to clear this up. And if you still do not understand, I do have series like the Understanding Israel series and what happens at the end of the Bible series that clears this up as well. Also, my video on replacement theology will help you understand this topic as well. Because this foundation that has been taught in mainstream Christianity 
is abhorrently false, and it has allowed the masses to be deceived and accept what Satan has been doing to bring about his false kingdom on this earth. So in regards to the events that lead to the rapture, we read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, but I want you to review something crucial in those verses. Verses 16 and 17 say, For the Adun himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of Elohim, and the dead in Messiah will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Adun in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Adun. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. Mark those scriptures. They're important. These verses are speaking about the resurrection of the dead. Let's be clear about it. The pre-tribulation rapture doctrine is saying that there first will be a resurrection of the dead. That's first. And then all of us living will be caught up with Messiah in the air. That's second. Now, what's being said here seems like a pretty big deal. Resurrection of the dead. The dead and Messiah rising from the dead. That seems pretty big to me. With big prophecy like this, Yah normally gives other prophets the same vision so that there's clarity. So let's ask, isn't there any more Bible prophecy that deals with that event? And the answer is absolutely yes. And it ironically comes from another book that many Christians read. It's ironic that though the majority of Christians in this world do not read their Bibles, of those that actually do read their Bibles, there are books that they make sure that they read, and they're particularly in the New Testament. This verse from 1 Thessalonians from Paul is definitely one of them, and the book of Revelations is another one. The Apostle John was given a full vision of the end, and if we go to the book of Revelation and then go to the end of that book, we gain clarity. I'm going to start at Revelation chapter 19, just so you can see exactly where in Bible prophecy we are. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of Yahuwah. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of El Shaddai. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great Elohim, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies, gather together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. That's Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 21. Okay, so chapter 19 is what we like to call the Battle of Armageddon. This is where the Antichrist prepares to battle Messiah, but loses horrifically. Let's keep reading, going on to Revelation chapter 20. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who was the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Yahusha and for the word of Elohim, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, 
and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Messiah for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of Elohim and of Messiah and shall reign with him a thousand years. And stop. Okay, I don't know if you caught it, but we're going to go back to it. That was Revelation chapter 20 verses 1 through 6. Now we're going to bring this all home. Let's go back and read verses 4 and 5. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Yahusha and for the word of Elohim, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Messiah for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. Here it is. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Understand those words. He clearly says that this event right here, after the battle of Armageddon, was the first resurrection. This period right here is the ending of the promise a thousand years before Judgment Day. There is more to come after this day when the judgment happens, and Yah brings down his new Jerusalem, there is a second resurrection. But to keep things in proper perspective, we will focus on the millennial kingdom. Because like he said in verse 5, the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. But we're just focused on the first one right now. This is what the promise has always been about. This is what we have all been leading up to. So all who make it through the tribulation, the sealed of Yasharel, as well as those who are tribulation saints, who are beheaded and killed for their witness and testimony of Yahusha, those who did not receive his mark, they all live with Messiah for a thousand years. And this kingdom that Yahusha will be king over, this is exactly what the Yahudim were expecting of Yahusha when he came the first time. But his time was not yet. But understand, this part right here, this is the first resurrection. So again, the nerve of any of us to create a resurrection before the one that was prophesied of actually happens. This prophecy is specific, so there can be no confusion. He said this is the first resurrection, and he explained who would be a part of it, so anybody that is saying that 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 will happen before the tribulation is very clearly making their own doctrine. They are creating a first resurrection before the actual first resurrection that was prophesied. And anyone that still wants to hold on to that pre-trib doctrine and said that that still is the case, they need to clearly show you the scripture that shows that there is actually a resurrection before the first one, because that literally makes no sense. Do you see what is going on here? False doctrine has taken hold of the majority because people have been lazy with their faith. Going to church every Sunday, following pastors that follow other pastors that follow other pastors that follow others. It's a cycle. Everyone is just following doctrine that has been given to them without studying for themselves. I mean, I'm okay with anyone disagreeing with me as long as you go back to the word and study it for yourself and then show through the word. You must study to show yourself approved. Those of you who are following the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine are in danger. You have not been preparing yourself and your faith to be strong enough to deal with persecution. You have not been building yourself up with enough strength to know how to reject the enemy's agenda and deal with the persecution that comes from it. You have only prepared yourself to not be a part of the fight. Get this clear and understand the game. This doctrine that the devil has infiltrated the church with has been the biggest neutralization of his enemy that we have ever seen. You have been neutralized in the fight during the end times. He's not worried about you because you have no idea what our father's plans are or what his will is. You are just on rapture watch waiting to disappear. You're saying you want no part in this battle that we're in. You're just waiting to disappear and let someone else be a witness for Yah. I want you to think about this. How many Christians are saying right now in these end times, looking at these events and say, yeah, world coin, look, they're taking retina scans. That means the rapture soon. Article, have you have you had your eyes scanned by what's called the orb? 
And this is why I said Michael don't believe in a pre-trip uh, rapture. Michael Schneider don't believe in a pre-trip rapture. I don't believe this thing is going to be rolled out until after the rapture because it makes sense. Number one, they would save a lot of money because millions of people will be gone. So they won't need to distribute to eight billion people. This is perfect for the Great Tribulation. Perfect. Because it can also keep track of who's left on the earth. Don't forget, the rapture is going to cause a lot of chaos on this earth. People are going to be like, what the heck just happened? Babies are going to be gone. Kids are going to be gone. Millions of people are going to disappear in the blink of an eye. All of a sudden. According to Zero Hedge, hundreds of thousands of people in Europe have already had their eyeballs scanned and have been issued a world ID. Now, let me stop right there and say this. If this is going on right now, how much closer again are we to the rapture of the church? Because this is definitely part of the eight, uh, Antichrist system. This is definitely part of the Great Tribulation. And this is coming. There's no doubt about it. But I don't believe it can't show up while the church is still here. Because this is evil. Oh look, the United States dollar looks like it's about to collapse. Yes, that means a global currency is coming soon. That must mean the rapture is on the way. Folks. The rapture of the church is about to happen. Why am I saying it's about to happen? Because the tribulation period is casting its shadow on the earth right here and right now. Uh, Revelation chapter 13, after the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. So the rapture of the church will occur. And I, could, I believe that could occur any day now. The rapture occurs. The Antichrist will be revealed after the rapture. And during the coming tribulation period, which we are not in yet, there will be a system in place that comes about that will be able to track and monitor every single human on the planet. And it's a system that's going to be able to control all buying and selling. And if we see this B system that's going to be implemented during the coming tribulation period, casting its shadow on the earth right here and right now, if we see the stage getting set up, for this coming beast system where they want to be able to track and monitor every single human on the planet and control all buying and selling. And we know the rapture occurs before the tribulation period begins. How close are we to the rapture? I would say a lot closer than people realize. It could occur at any moment. This is the mainstream. By now, I hope you can see the mind control of those thoughts. Those thoughts, anything like that, all they actually mean with anyone that has them it means that they have been successfully neutralized by Satan, which means that they are a non-factor to him. And I don't care if you disagree. It's already been proven by looking back on how so many of you dealt with the pandemic. And I'm not coming at you. I just want you to think here. How many of you on Rapture Watch rolled up your sleeves being a part of churches that shut down the spreading of the word because they had fear? We are not apologizing for being the most conservative and the most cautious during this period. Piney Grove Baptist Church in DeKalb County says it's requiring worshipers to sign a waiver, get their temperature checked, and show proof of vaccination before attending in-person services. We said we were gonna follow the science, not our emotions. Everybody wanted to come to church, but we were gonna follow the science, and we did just that. Complete hypocrisy. Complete. How many of you, though? You should know that a majority of churches, particularly in America, have had training with organizations like FEMA that when events that lead us into the tribulation occur, these same churches that have had you looking for something that will not happen, they will know exactly what to say to keep you aligned with the agenda. Community-based organizations, also known as CBOs, play a crucial role in the daily lives of Americans. That's why I'm excited to announce FEMA's new course designed to help CBOs called OPEN, Organizations Preparing for Emergency Needs. These are food banks, child care centers, shelters, and houses of worship that make our community stronger. They're also a resource to those impacted by a disaster. When CBOs aren't able to stay open during disasters, communities, individuals, and staff members who rely on their services are deeply impacted. That's why it's imperative that FEMA help support the preparedness of these organizations. They have been trained 
to continue on with your neutralizing. Not to set you free, but to keep you neutralized. Now, I know that this message will not wake up everyone, but I do pray that it wakes you up if you have been under the spell of this false doctrine. And I also pray that this helps others who have been in this fight debating the invalidity of the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. If you use these two videos combined and have a true conversation showing fruit and love, you may be able to reach those you were unable to reach before. And I pray that chains are broken and bondage is lifted and eyes are open and hearts are more ready to receive Yah in truth. So understand, the first resurrection comes after the battle of Armageddon because that is what the scriptures clearly says. If you choose to hold on to the false doctrine of a resurrection that happens before the first, you are choosing to be on the opposite side of Yah and you will be judged for this. You are right now being given the chance to wake up from these falsehoods. So do yourself a favor and turn away from your pride and your ego and truly seek out Yah according to the scriptures and not by the traditions and doctrines of men that are living in deception. I will not say that all these teachers and pastors are all purposely false. I do not believe that that is the case and that is true. It's just the way things really go. It's the same thing over and over. Lies being told and told over time are now turned into truth. You're just being taught by someone else that received this understanding false. And then you teach it to someone and this happens over and over, over generations. And now what has happened is that the truth becomes what people reject and the lies are what people uphold. And that's because it was made popular. The falsehood has now turned into the truth. And that's what happened here. So I'm not saying that all your pastors are just doing this on purpose and they're purposely deceiving you. A lot of them are, but not all of them. But in the end, it doesn't really matter. They're leading you falsely and you need to turn away from them. And if you do not have connection to any of them or able to have the real discussion with them and talk about these things, you need to remove yourself from that influence. The truth of the whole matter is yourself and your pastors are not reading the scriptures. That's what it all really comes down to. You know you're not reading the Bible. You know you're just going to church and letting them tell you what's in it. And so if you're following these teachers and they're teaching and reading these scriptures from the doctrines and traditions of men that they learned when they went to theology school or, or their dad who was their pastor or what they've been learning in their Masonic Lodge, wherever it came from. If they're learning from these influences of men and not allowing the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit to guide their thoughts and to lead them, you will be led astray. We are in the last days and it is imperative that you make sure you are following the scriptures and not men. Yahusha has prophesied of this. He said, Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. That's Matthew chapter 24, verses 11 through 13. There is a reason why Yahusha told us, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. That's Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. The pre-tribulation rapture doctrine is a completely wide gate that everyone is planning to enter into Yah's kingdom through. And this wide gate is going to lead everyone that decides to go through it to destruction. And the sad part is because they know the narrow gate is difficult and they don't want to deal with it, they're not going to go through it. At the end of the day, we all truly need to know Messiah. Too many of us have the wrong understanding of him. He is not someone that just allows lawlessness and just lets us do whatever we want to do. Yes, celebrate me on this day. Follow the world. It's okay. That's not him. Those of you who want to lazily claim your faith while you ignore his words and ignore his commands, you don't seek him out yourself. You rely on others to build your personal relationship with him. You don't want to bear your own cross, but you're just hoping to disappear. You need to know this clearly. Right now, you are not about doing your father's will. That is not what your life is on. And if you do not change this, you will be rejected. He said, not everyone who says to me, Adonai, Adonai, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father in heaven. 
Many will say to me in that day, Adonai, Adonai, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That's Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. He said this clearly. He said, he who does the will of my Father in heaven shall enter the kingdom of heaven. That's him, not me. And so I am making this to show you your error and hopefully convict you to turn to Yah in truth and truly seek after him. Reject all these false doctrines and these false teachers. Get rid of them all. And let me be clear. I am not telling you to get rid of them just so you can start following me either. These videos are just about trying to help awaken you, but they are not and they should not ever be used as a replacement of personal study. If at this time you're confused and you still don't know what to believe, turn me off as well, as well as everyone else, and just pick up your Bible from the beginning and read it. Listen, I know how difficult it is to change what you have believed in all your life. I went through this too. This is a process many of us have to go through that were raised up in churchianity. We heard these things and we just accepted them. We never actually studied this and then learned it on our own. You didn't come up with the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine on your own. It was taught to you and you accepted it. The process of going through the doctrines that we were told and then lining them up with the word can be difficult. So I am not expecting that the majority of you that watch this video right now will all of a sudden just understand. I mean, I pray that happens, but that's not my full expectation. Some of you I have spoken to in these comments for years, and you are very stubborn. I am not telling you to just blindly believe me. I am saying that now that this has been made very clear, I showed you the history of how this doctrine came to be. You may want to reject that you were taught by Darby, and of course you weren't because he's been dead a long time. But you've been taught by someone else who was taught by someone else who was taught by someone else who was influenced by Darby. This is how it goes. So you can't just say that you were not influenced by this because you did not come up with the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine on your own. You were taught it. So like I said, I showed you the history of how the doctrine came to be. I showed the danger of separating yourself from the covenant Yah made with Israel. I showed clearly the first resurrection in scripture. With all of this, for you to just say you're just going to reject what I'm saying, this is clearly just your pride and your ego not allowing yourself to understand. I am sincerely asking you to pray about this sincerely and go back and review what you have learned because what if you're wrong? What I'm asking is if you read these scriptures, all everything that you're talking about, if you read these scriptures on your own and you never heard of the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine, would you come up with the same conclusion? I mean, we have this whole view that He's going to take away the children and the babies too. Where did that come from? These are things that are not clearly defined in scripture. Go back and review what you have learned. Again, because what if you're wrong? Faith in the pre-tribulation rapture is not a requirement for salvation and acceptance. Faith in Yahusha is what is required. If I don't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, but I fully believe in Yahusha, no matter when he comes, I'm going to be accepted by him. You have to understand that. But if you have rejected the covenant Yahuwah has made for you, and you have believed in something that has you completely unprepared for the times ahead, you can see that if you're wrong, you will not be ready. You might want to take the cop out and say, we don't know whether it's pre or mid or post, so let's just always be ready. I use that too. I made a whole video on that. But I took that video down because it's completely wrong. If you are accepting the pre-tribulation rapture, you have placed yourself in another covenant and you have rejected the covenant that brings you salvation. I've given so many different examples. I mean, just understand the church, the church sees the enemy approaching. They see these agendas that are coming against them. They are not asleep. They are completely aware. But what they're not doing is preparing themselves to overcome. They are preparing themselves not to fight and they're preparing themselves to disappear. And that's why so many of them were overtaken in the last episode.
but rather we're going to talk about whether Christians should take this vaccination and is this vaccination somehow connected to the mark of the beast. So here are question number one is if you believe in the rapture, more specifically the pre-tribulation rapture, which is the teaching that I subscribe to, which is the idea that Christ is going to return for his church and he is going to rapture or take away all those who have placed their faith in Christ, then that means that by the time the mark of the beast is even offered, then we aren't going to be here to accept it anyway, because we are going to be in heaven with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you believe in that, which I do, then taking a vaccination or a chip or anything is not necessarily anything we need to be worried about because we will be raptured and long gone before any sort of mark of the beast is available. Then taking a vaccination or a chip or anything is not necessarily anything we need to be worried about because we will be raptured and long gone before any sort of mark of the beast is available. And this doctrine and way of thought was everywhere. If you don't see the deception from this, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it seems very clear. So don't just take my word for it. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm asking you to pray about this and take it to him and go back to the word and review it without the influence that you once had. Just go back to it with fresh eyes. Go back to the first resurrection and understand that there cannot be a resurrection that happens before the first resurrection. You're literally contradicting the word. And if you do come to the truth of this whole thing, pray and repent. Pray to Yah and tell him that you repent for not seeking him more seriously. But now, at this moment, you desire that you know him and you know his will today. Ask for forgiveness and then truly live like you truly meant it. And seek him out like your life depends on it. Because it truly does. Give him all the time that you can. Learn about him. Learn about his covenants. Get rid of the distractions and seek him out in sincerity through his word, through his Holy Spirit. And he will get you ready for him. This is what you need to do. This is how you will overcome. This is how you will be ready. It's not replacing those false teachers for me. I always pray to be a vessel for Yah and a resource to all that I can be. But let's be clear that I am no one except someone Yahuwah has given a voice to. If you never heard it before, you are hearing it now. In these times to come, you are required to have faith and strength in Yah and it is absolutely necessary that you begin to build yourself up now. And I pray that this has been made more clear to you on this day and hour because the times ahead are going to get bad. And more than likely, because you have been preparing to disappear, you have not prepared yourself. If you feel you're behind on this, I have made videos about preparing that can help you. This is a playlist. If you feel like you need some advice on what to do, I pray those videos can help you. But again, the answer is Yah. So if you focus on him and focus on knowing him, he will guard you. He will keep you. In the end, we are called and charged to overcome. And so I am just waking you up and reminding you to do just that. Prepare yourself and be ready now for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Be ready for it and make sure you yourself walk through the narrow gate. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay. Thanks again for watching. I really hope this has blessed you. Please make sure to like it and share this video with others. Discuss this. Have fruitful discussions. But I'm happy and blessed that I was able to make this video. These two videos, actually. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Yah willing, I upload every Friday. Please don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. If for any reason you do not see this channel any longer, you can always find this ministry on truthunedited.com. Make sure you subscribe to the email list to always stay connected. I ask that you please continue to pray for this ministry. Please know your prayers and your support are sincerely appreciated. As always, I want to give a special thank you to those who have donated to this ministry. Your contribution 
It's a huge blessing to this ministry, and they help me very much continue on with this assignment. Your support is a blessing, and I thank you. I'm always humbled by your support. Be blessed. Okay. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. I love you all.